Hey everyone, Joey here. In this video, I'm going to show you how I put together this flight deck using some black walnut, cherry, and some black flocking material I had left over from a previous project. Now, I love creating things, and I think one of the greatest joys in creating things is by creating things for others. And so this is going to be a gift for my parents who love beer tasting, love trying out new beers, and so I thought, uh, why not create something for them, show my appreciation. Now, I've just started getting into woodworking over the past year or so, and by no means am I a master woodworker just yet. So, um, bear that in mind as you watch this video, but I'm going to show you how I put this thing together, and I hope you enjoy it. So the first thing I did was I purchased some beer tasting glasses, and I just wanted to be able to measure the bottom of the glass so I knew exactly how big to bore the holes out in the wood uh, for the glasses to sit in, and I picked up some stainless steel drawer poles to use as handles, uh, for picking up and moving it around. Next, I placed everything out on the table and tried to figure out a good distance between you know, the fingers and the drawer poles and the glasses to make sure um, everything felt good. And I made a template out of foam core and drew out all the measurements where I needed to drill the holes, put the drawer poles, and what the final dimensions were going to be. Next, I picked up some wood which is just some leftover cherry and black walnut I had laying around from some previous projects. I think they go well together. Um, I really like the colors and I think it, uh, it turned out really nice. And here I'm just cutting them up on the uh, miter saw and cutting them just a little bit long because I knew I was going to be uh, have a little bit of waste for the design I wanted to go with. So here I'm just squaring everything up on the joiner which I had to do a couple passes on the cherry because there was a little bit of a wobble in it. So I, uh, fortunately, uh, the thicknesses turned out to be just about right for both of them. And then I squared up the third edge on the table saw to make sure that when I glued them together, they had a nice, um, nice flat surface to be married up against. Slice. And time for some glue. Type on two. So uh, here I'm just gluing it up and just clamping it together. And these are just some cheap clamps I picked up just for doing things like this. Uh, just wiped it down with a wet paper towel afterwards to get rid of the excess glue. Let it sit overnight. I uh, took it out and I noticed that the underside definitely needed to be sanded down, but that's okay. I was going to pass it through the planer anyway. The top was pretty smooth, so I passed through the planer a couple times, and that got rid of the excess glue on the one side, and everything came out nice and smooth. And here I'm transferring my template to the piece. And I put it at an angle because I thought it'd be more interesting. I didn't want to just have parallel lines everywhere. Um, I figured this would stand out a little bit better. And I really like the way the design came out. Um, it's not completely over the top, but it just adds a, just a nice little touch. And here I'm passing it through the table saw with an angle jig that I picked up recently uh, just for things like this. Once the angle was cut, I just had to pass it through the table saw and the crosscut sled as normal. And that was a piece of cake. And here's the finished design uh, as far as the wood goes. So really like the way that looks. And here I'm just transferring my measurements from the template to the wood so I knew exactly where to put all the marks so I could drill the holes and bore the holes out with a uh, Forstner bit. And the hardware was attached to the ends um, exactly one inch from either side. So here I'm boring out the hole with the Forstner bit, and I think I'm going to go with a, a router template next time. The Forstner bit was definitely bogging down. I didn't really like that divot in the middle. Um, I hadn't thought about that before I'd actually started doing it. So, well, whatever. Hindsight is 2020, but that's okay. I think it turned out pretty good. And so here I'm just insetting the, um, the holes for the screws so that the... Um, the head of the screw isn't uh, sticking out the bottom and scraping on the table or something like that. Here I'm dry fitting all the parts, just making sure everything fits, it's snug, and I got all my measurements correct. 
And here we go. Here's what it's going to look like before I added flocking to inside of the holes, um, just because I didn't like that that little notch in the middle there. Gave everything a nice round over on the router table using a round over bit, and sanded it nice and smooth. I used 120, 220, and 400 grit sandpaper uh, to get a nice smooth finish, and wiped away the excess dust and um, just wanted to see what it was look like before the uh, finish goes on so I used a little mineral spirits and then the finish was uh, armor seal uh, I used a, uh, no not a satin I used a flat like a matte finish um, just because I didn't want it to be too shiny um, and I think the look came out great so I masked the holes for the flocking glue with <laughs> with masking tape uh, painters tape and I know there's tape out there that you can create circles with um, pretty easily, but I didn't know what it was called and I didn't have enough time. So, so yeah, so I did that. But um, it worked fairly well. And here I'm just flocking the inside of the holes with the flocking material. And this stuff is messy. It gets everywhere. Make sure you use a respirator when using this stuff because you do not want to breathe this in. It just goes everywhere so here you can see I put it inside of a tote just so that there wouldn't be a lot of this stuff floating around my entire basement and then I sealed it up and let it sit for at least 72 hours I think it was actually 48 hours because um, I checked on it and it seemed to be okay so um, I lightly vacuumed above it just to pull out just enough of the fibers I was afraid to get too close because I didn't want to rip it out um, and here I'm just removing all of the masking tape. Some of the glue did get under the edge of the masking tape, so I wish I had, <laughs> I wish I had used that other uh, that other tape, found out what it was. But um, luckily the glue wasn't fully cured, so a little bit of mineral spirits and some elbow grease, and that came out just fine. All right, and now I'm just putting out of the final assembly, putting in the hardware, screwing it down nice and snug, and basically I've finished, finished Beer Flight, ready to be used. I think they're really going to enjoy this. Well, and there you have it, finished Beer Flight. Really happy with the way this came out, it was a lot of fun, and I really think they're going to enjoy it when they're tasting all those beers out. Uh, anyways, if you've enjoyed this video, consider subscribing so you can catch future videos. And until next time, thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you later.